G'day guys, Michael here from bestbookbits.com, the home of the world's largest free book summary website in video, written and audio format. And I've got a new show for you today. We're going over the four hour work week with my friend, Mattis McGill from uh, America, a fellow YouTuber who is into book summaries, health challenges. So Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me on, Michael. This is no worries, awesome. Man. No worries. So uh, for my audience that don't know who you are, tell us um, a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a, another fellow YouTuber that's into learning, into growing. Um, my channel I started three years ago after I wrote my book, uh, 14 Real Life Superpowers. And I started the channel as a way to um, create a, a community and a relationship with people that are also into personal development and learning. It was also an, I an idea I had to help um, categorize all the information that I learned in a way that um, will help me remember the books that I read because there's a lot of books that I have read and I forgot what the content was all about. So that's why I created the channel so that way I can help organize it and also um, build a, a, a web, so to speak, a positive web, um, which is basically like putting valuable content out there for an audience to, to, to have and build a brand equity into something. Um, on the personal note, um, I have a, a wife and two kids. So I'm very much of a family man. And yes, during the day, I work in uh, real estate sales. So yeah, residential real estate and um, personal development and reading has always been a, a, a hobby and a passion um, that I feel more people should be into. You know, I think more people shouldn't be into finding ways to make themselves better, their mind, body, and their spirit. Because, you know, if you're not, if you're not growing, you're dying. You know, that's yeah, a, a common phrase that I hear. And, you know, there's, there's some quotes that are great, but they should be lived by, you know, taking action on the things that you learn and on the things that you, you, that you hear is way more valuable than just, you know, giving it a like on social media and then continuing a bad habit or continuing a, a, a bad routine. Yeah, so I feel like yeah. the channel that what we both do is very valuable for people out there because it's a uh, condensing um, the valuable content of a book and making it so that it's digestible and, five, 10, 15 minutes. And yeah. also it's a, it's a great way of helping spark people's interest in them to go ahead and buy the book themselves and improve their life as well. Mm. So um, that's a whole lot of just off the cuff, 6 a.m. Yeah, absolutely. So 6 a.m. <laughs> for those playing at home, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. It's 9 p.m. now. And Matt, where are you from? Um, I live in Florida in yeah. uh, USA. And, and right now it's uh, 6 a.m., but morning, night, it don't, it don't matter. We can, I can make adjustments. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And for my viewers playing at home, I've been following uh, Matt's channel for a couple of years, so he's a fellow um, book summary uh, person as well. And one of the challenges that uh, he did recently was a David Goggins challenge. So uh, if you don't know what the David Goggins challenge is, I'll, I'll put it over to Matt to tell you what he did, but it's absolutely extreme. Uh, Matt, what did you do with the David Goggins challenge? The, the David Goggins challenge is the 4-4-48 challenge. For those that don't know what that is, it's four miles every four hours for 48 hours. So it's a ridiculously difficult uh, challenge, and it, it sounds crazy. But when I first heard it was um, on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast when he had his guest Jesse Itzler in. And Jesse Itzler is a, a world-renowned entrepreneur that uh, um, was very intrigued by this guy, David Goggins, when he did a 100-mile marathon. He saw all his feet, feet break. He saw his body completely get torn apart, but he, he didn't stop, you know, and he, until he completed, until David Goggins completed the 100-mile challenge. So, like, watching him do that, it really inspired him to meet this guy, and he ended up inviting him to, to live with him for a month. And one of the challenges that he did living with him for a month was four miles every four hours for 48 hours. And... That sounded so crazy to me when I first heard it, but I also thought like how cool it is for someone to actually be able to do it. You know, that's like, a, that's amazing street cred credibility, you know. You didn't, and, just, you didn't just read it though, you actually did it. That's, that's the whole thing, what you're saying. You, you yeah. read it, but you got off your fucking ass and you actually did it, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because some, cause some things you really can't uh, intellectualize, you really have to experience. You know, you really have to, you can't just intellectualize what it feels like to have your complete body break down on you and your mind want to quit, but your spirit says, I'm not going to quit. We're not done. And then you complete it. And then when you complete it, you realize, well, my mind and body are actually a lot tougher than I, I thought they were. 
Yeah. You know, now, but, I, for for those the, those tuning in and thinking, uh, we're talking about the David Goggins book. We we actually should just wipe this video and just do the David Goggins book. But uh, from personal experience, we <laughs> yeah. will jump onto the four hour work week. So those playing yeah. at home, yes, this is the four hour work week thing. But I just want to give an introduction to Matt. So Matt not only does book summaries, he actually takes action on the information that he receives. So some of the things that I'm doing as well is very similar to Matt. So I'm doing a health challenge at the moment. Matt's also doing health challenges too. So if you guys get inspired and need coaches and want someone to be accountable, Matt is definitely your person and I'll be your second person for that as well. So uh, thanks for the introduction. So if people want to actually jump on and, and find out uh, more about what Matt's done and his videos, where, where can they reach you on, uh, on YouTube, Matt? Um, they can just uh, reach me on YouTube um, at Mattless McGill or on Instagram, um, same exact handle. And that's about it. Yeah, perfect. All right, perfect. All right, guys. So we're going to jump into the, the four-hour work week. So this is a book that uh, I believe was published back in uh, 2007, and it weighs about 400 pages. So it's uh, quite a thick, hefty book. Now, one of the little tippets that will jump in, now when Tim Ferriss originally wrote the four-hour work week, the title of the book, The Four-Hour Work Week, he actually made it to be controversial so it would sell. So there was multiple titles and and headlines that he was actually working with. But if they chose the four-hour work week, one of his regrets was that you don't work four hours a week. Tim probably works 40 hours a week, but he doesn't see it as work. He sees it as a passion. So Tim has designed his life, which he calls the new rich. So the new rich is doing what you want, when you want, with whom you want. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, the four-hour work week, absolute, um, everyone knows about it. It's huge. I read this book back in 2000 and... I think it was three years ago um, and had aspirations of obviously following the four-hour work week. But I work about 100 hours a week, so I'm doing daily vlogs. You can see my life. So we don't stop. I know Matt's up early and he works hard too. But, yeah, what have you found out from the book yourself, Matt? What, what sort of things jumped out of you when you uh, first read the book? Um, when I first read the book, one, one thing that's jumped out to me a lot was I kept thinking, you know, this book will be even more valuable once I have, like, a business you know, an actual, like, I don't know if it'll be LLC or a PA or if I have employees, but it's really not just for, for businesses. You know, a lot of people are self-employed in a way. And I think that's a mindset more than anything, because you could be an employee of a company, but still view yourself as your own boss, you know, and when you view yourself as your own boss, you're not going to limit yourself with one income. So there's a lot of people that can have one stream of income as an employee, but if they perceive themselves as an employer, they're their own business, they may look for other ways to make money, to have multiple streams of income. So there's only a few ways to make money. You can inherit it, you can win the lottery, you can steal it, you can earn it, but when you earn it, you have to trade time for money. And there's only so many hours in the day. So if you're working eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours a day, and you have family and sleep and health, you're not gonna have enough time to earn more money. So there's only one other way to make money and it's to invest it. Yeah. It's to invest your money. Yeah. And one thing that I like about the four hour work week is it's play on time, having the ability to use time in your benefit through various ways, outsourcing it, optimization, efficiency, you know, how can I do more with less time? So whether you're, you own your own company, or you're an employee, but you have the mindset of a boss and you want to increase your, your income and have multiple streams of income. It's about that. It's about efficiencies. You know, how can I do more with less? You know, how can I do more with less time? Where, where can I outsource where it's going to be a good deal? You know, not like outsourcing all of your money for one thing to save a little bit of time, but, but how you, how you can just increase efficiencies, optimization. Yeah. That's kind of like the main thing that, that I remember getting out of it yeah. when I read it on audio and then so, I, yeah so you read it you read it and listened to it on audio as well um I've read it all the way through yeah. on audio yeah and I bought the physical copy after I finished the audio yeah what cover, and what cover do you have you got the I had I got the orange you got the orange yeah got it yeah the updated yeah. expanded yeah I think of says it's yeah. yeah he's um it was obviously rewritten a few times I think that's the original one I've got the updated and expanded one how many pages is your one my one's about 400 pages this one is well, hardcover. about the same 419 yeah got it got it yeah so one of, one of the things i'm trying to do with this uh, new format of going through books is to obviously go through some of the key highlight points that i've done so 
looking at the whiteboard behind me, I will do a quick video of that later on. So that would be maybe a 15 minute video where I'll go through some of the key highlight points. I've done about a 25 minute video previously about three years ago on my channel. I'll redesign that and do that for my channel as well. But one of the things just to touch on what you said there, Matt, was Tim Ferriss goes big about uh, the, it's called the new rich. So what is the new rich? So the new rich is about lifestyle design. So I guess post COVID 2020, uh, people that would normally been working maybe 60, 80 hours a week and then they've lost their jobs or basically they have to work from home. People are now redesigning their lifestyle. So Tim was talking about this back in 2007 when workaholism was massive and Tim was like, hang on a sec, Tim worked himself to the ground. Tim got very, very successful, but he realized that workaholism and success, it's not really success if at the end you're burnt out and you're rich. So Tim came to the realization was, how can I automate my life to have this new thing called the new rich, which is time and mobility. So one of the biggest things Tim said was, how can I be, how can I, people don't want to be a millionaire. People just want the lifestyle of a millionaire. So how can I design my lifestyle to be a millionaire when I'm not a millionaire? And that is the lifestyle of the, the new rich, which is time and mobility. Would you, would you agree with, with, with that, uh, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Yeah, so the new rich, it's, it's um, yeah, using leverage. So I've, I've made a few notes on the whiteboard, and also I'm not going to turn my head around, but people are leveraging currency differences to outsource their life. So one of the other biggest things with the, with the rise of, obviously, virtual assistants and Upwork and Fiverr, people are using currency. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk likes to call them um, arbitrage, so currency arbitrage. So if you're earning maybe $10 US an hour, you can actually hire people $5 US an hour. If you're earning $20 yourself US an hour, the, the currency exchanges. So someone earning uh, a couple of hundred dollars US in a third world country is actually living the lifestyle of the middle class of someone in America. So not only, it's not a bad thing, it's just globalization has now taken virtual assistance. So this is something Tim was talking about in 2007, all those, that, so 13 years ago. So he's definitely a trendsetter um, in the book. So the book copped a lot of flack and a lot of criticism, but I urge you, so if you have this book on your bookshelf right now, Reread it. We'll, we'll both do a summary. Me and Matt will do a video on it and, and talk about it in more depth. But if you go through it now, he was more like a, Tim Ferriss is more like a fortune teller. So they, I, I, I'm blown away by rereading it again on some of the things that I got out of it. But um, yeah, I, I, I really think it's um, it's amazing. And one of the things that I want to ask you, Matt, um, Tim goes about. He talks reality is negotiable. He says what we need to do. There's a thing called deal. Now it's on the back here. Deal stands for definition elimination, automation, and liberation. So yeah, the, breaking the book down into basically four parts, which is, which is, which is the acronym for DEAL. Um, you talked a little bit about automation, but what's your definition of, of, of liberation like for yourself? What does is, what is liberation mean to you in terms of your business and what you want to do? Um, for me, I would say liberation would be freedom. Yeah. And you, you said, I've got a wife as well. You've got a wife, you've got two kids. I've got, I've got one so far. Yeah, spending time with them and obviously automating things. Like how many hours are you working so far? Like, I mean, you're up at six, obviously you're, you're, you're wife duties, dad duties. And then you said you're into real estate, into real estate at the moment. Um, what, what's the future yeah. for like you um, and practicing the four hour work week, so to speak? Yeah, um, I don't think that I've in any way perfected the four hour work week. I feel like I've just gotten better at juggling, you know, yep. throughout the years where yep. it, the juggling is between, you know, all of my priorities that I have in life. Obviously work would be one of them. Uh, you mentioned wife, so family relationship. And when you're in, when you have a family, it's also important to identify those two different roles. Cause let's say you're married with kids. If you're married with kids, yeah, you are a mother and a father to those kids, but you're also a husband and a wife to each other yeah, so you correct. have to make sure that there's a prioritization to have both because at the end of the day like your family is your home your family is your core and if there's anything you know that gets neglected from your core you know by focusing too much on other things whether it's uh, business or whatever then you know well, what are we working so hard for anyways if we're going to ruin if you're going to ruin your home what's the point of working hard so it's, it's it's juggling to prioritize making sure that your home's good and also making sure that you're advancing in your career and businesses as well. So I don't think I've perfected the four hour work week um, at all, but I definitely, it's, it's something that's like a, a beacon of hope of knowing that it is possible. 
and figuring out ways to, to, to make myself and make my life have more freedom. And autonomization is, is one of them. And when I attended Tony Robbins Business Mastery, one thing that would come up a lot when, it, when we're talking about business is the difference between an owner and an operator. So a lot of people are like, all right, who owns their business? So everyone raises their hand. And how many of you are operators? And another great percentage would raise their hand. And it's because there's a lot of people that own their business, but they're less free. They're actually, in a way, a slave to the business. Right. Where right. a lot of people go into business for liberation, but then they realize, I am working now 60 hours, 70, 80 hours a week. Yeah. Where yeah. when I was working as an employee, I was working 40 hours, I had vacation, etc. So it's getting to a point from being an operator to being an owner. And I think that's one um, thing that the four hour work week, you know, definitely helps people do is find different ways to go from being an operator of their business into being an owner of yeah, their business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was trying to find the quote in the book. Tim actually talks about this. He says, if you work really, really hard at your job for the next 20 years and work eight hours a day, you could actually um, become the boss and, and work 80 hours a week. So, you know, yeah. as I said, as, as Tim's saying, like the, the top of the ladder, being the CEO of a company, like, um, I've met many CEOs of companies, they work 80 to 100 hours a week. And um, obviously in, in some of the jobs that I've, I've done personally and had to rub shoulders with quite wealthy individuals, their time schedule is up at five, out the house at 5.30, you know, home at nine, 9.30 at night, working all day, night, emails, nonstop for that extra beach house, that, you know, that extra car. And, you know, is that really, you know, burn yourself out to your 50 and 55 and then you have to take a five, 10 year, mental break at 65 and have a heart attack and die. And Tim's like, well, why wait now to live that millionaire lifestyle? Why not have a, one of the biggest concepts in the book, which was amazing, was have a mini retirement now. So if you're in your 20s or 30s, take a sabbatical, take a year or two off. You're not going to die. The world is not going to collapse. And one of the things he talks about in the book, once you take three months off, your body actually goes back. You, so if you're a workaholic, if you work 100 hours or 80 hours a week and COVID hits you, and then all of a sudden you're back at home you're with your family, you're, un, you're unwinding. After a month or two, you actually unwind so much that you actually get back in touch with your sleeping patterns, who you really are, relationships, what's important as well. Uh, so I think the time we're living in right now is a massive wake-up call and a big change for people who have been working um, you know, to the bone and, and it's been forced upon. So sometimes change that's been forced upon people brings out the best. And we might look back in this time in the future in five or 10 years time and say, you know, that COVID was the best thing that happened to me, even though as a global level, it's the worst thing happening right now. But um, yeah, I think Tim's spot on with these mini retirements in twenties and thirties. And it's, yeah, it's um, yeah. Massive respect for the guy. Took a lot of heat, sold a lot of books, Obviously, he's the human guinea pig himself, and he lived it. Like, it's not a theory book. It's, like you said, Paul, the David Goggins. It's practical. He's done it. So he's talking about experience. So amazing book. Yeah, I'm going to do, obviously, a proper summary of it, and obviously, we'll go over it. But we just thought we'd jump on this little thing to, to riff a little bit and talk about some of our feelings of it as well. So obviously, I've got show notes here on the phone. I've got show notes there too. But, yeah, what do you think, Matt? I mean, what do you think about mini retirements? Mm -hmm. One thing I want to mention is you're talking about, um, you know, flipping 2020 to being a positive. And I think that's what everybody should do. You know, like we obviously have a choice. We could perceive things in the negative or the positive. You know, both are in front of us. It's just we have a choice. Pick which one we want. And I don't think very often in life it gets easier, you know, but often sometimes life can become more challenging because you let's look at it from the example of someone that, you know, has achieved all the financial success in the world, but then as life goes on, they start to experience more, more of their loved ones dying. They start to, you know, f you know, have those more emotional difficulties. Maybe they come down with a health problem themselves. So, you know, no matter, no matter what, sometimes life sometimes can get more difficult for people as they get older, you know, because they can achieve material success, but then later in life, they can have some type of other, you know, downfall that they have to overcome. So I don't think life often gets easier. You know, maybe they could become financially easier, but but um, what I'm getting at is it's a call to make us stronger. And when we get stronger, we overcome those difficulties. Because if we weren't called to get stronger, then we would become stagnant. 
Yeah, so I think absolutely. life sometimes throws adversity at people. And I think that that's a blessing. That's more what I'm getting at. Cause um, obviously life can get easier for people financially. You know, as we get more mature, we can deal with things more emotionally, but um, you know, definitely I, I know from my own life, as I've gotten older, um, adversity has become more present and that's been a call to make me stronger to overcome those adversities you know well, life for me was a lot easier 10 years ago but i wouldn't want my life 10 years ago because you know i wouldn't be who i am if i didn't have the adversities so i think that sometimes setbacks adversity are blessings in disguise and i think people need to to realize that and and you're right a lot of people have been working you know 40 50 60 70 whatever amount of hours and now that they're stuck in their homes they don't have that time so it's less of doing and they're more of just being being with themselves being with them fam their family and i think that is important time i think there's a lot of people that have been lacking self-awareness and, and i'm guilty of that as well but you can only really figure out who you are is when you take the time to sit with yourself and really you know analyze like what do i want you know what am i good at what 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 do i feel like i want to you know uh make an impact with in my life yeah. you know because when you know what you're willing to die for it's more powerful than what you know what you're willing to live for you know so it's about finding your mission finding your cause finding a way to you know uh help something that's bigger than yourself because you know when we have something that we're striving for that's bigger than ourselves that's more motivating than just you know doing it for ourselves yeah um but we were talking about COVID. yeah so, the so, little, the yeah. little ramble but no that was that was beautiful now you, you put it poetically and uh one of the things i did a video a couple months ago i oh, sorry a couple of weeks ago so for myself personally like um you know just writing my book success in 50 steps i've had to come out and say hang on a second um i've done 600 video uh summaries without my face on it so let me just turn the camera on and tell people who i am and then I had this idea of the three masks. And then the, the same day I did that, I come across a quote called the three, the Japanese three masks. I'm not sure if you, you've heard about it. So the Japanese say, we all wear three masks. Number one is the public mask. This is the, the facade that we wear, okay? Number two is the friends and family mask. And number three is the mask that you don't show anyone else. What COVID's done, and I think what Tim's talking about the four-hour work week is COVID's made us take off that number one mask, which is our public mask, because there's no public. So you, you've had to deal with friends and family. So you're wearing mask number two and you'll get more comfortable in... So it's taking away the facade of, of people's jobs and titles and, you know, people talking about real things and going deep. I think the, the more deep you're vulnerable you become and the more you can speak to others about your vulnerabilities, the more people will open up. But what I'm trying to say with what you were saying with um, through challenges and difficulties, it it, it is get to your center so if you can start um yeah, it's very hard to sort of describe it but the, the more you're um the more you're vulnerable have courage the more you're talking about your inner self the more natural things will become as well right oh, i've done a video on it it's I, I don't know where i'm rambling and ranting on that but um and how it relates to the four-hour work week but yeah I, I i really think the new lifestyle and redesigning that is more of the heart not of the head and I think that's what's going to happen in the next decade is a lot more people talking about feelings, pain, challenges. We're all in this together. We're all in economic slavery. We live in a world of economic slavery. And, and that's just a fact. And it doesn't matter if you're a millionaire, 10 million, 100 million, we all live in the chains, chains of slavery, which is money. Okay. But we don't live in the chains of slavery. So like if you become rich and I don't become rich, like what are you going to do with your riches? You know what I mean? If you hit your goal and I don't become a goal, what are you going to do after you hit your goal? You're still going to live life. So, you know, make an impact. Um, yeah, I think we're getting way off the book topic, but I think it all interlinks. <laughs> it all, all interlinks. Like, what, what do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, no, absolutely. I think the idea is to not, you know, well, with something like this, to not just read the book, you know what I mean? Because obviously people can go read the book for themselves, but to really find what is the most valuable way to to um deliver this content you know to someone that either has already read it or someone that hasn't read it you know yeah, and sometimes yeah. that's that means going off a tangent because that's that's life you know well, what that's, tim says one of the one of the quotes sorry to cut you off and just um i just no, came through the quote there he said don't just think outside the box box act outside the box so don't just think outside he wants you to act outside the box and tim's done many various different things through his journey of life because 
life is a it's a it's a buffet. You have to taste a lot of things to know what you like. So yes, Tim got um, a little bit wealthy and and got some money and had the freedom to move around and to you know dancing in another country, you know, spend some time here and there. It, life's all about tasting. So a lot of people are just eating the same thing or experiencing the same taste. You have to go out there and live it. So don't just think, act outside the box. So do something different. And I think it's yeah. a challenge what you just said. Don't just read the book, act, act the book, act the book. I don't know if he mentioned it in his book, but I remember Tim Ferriss mentioned this on his podcast where about acting things out rather than just intellectualizing it. But one of those things was about overcoming uh, fears you know, over, and one of the fears that he had was uh, like embarrassment. I think everybody has fears of yeah, embarrassment. Yeah, you know, I feel like I yeah. embarrass myself on a daily basis. I'm you always embarrassing yeah, myself, yeah. but that's why we also have to be good at laughing at ourselves because sure. humor is amazing. Humor is the most, is one of the most truthful things. It's either funny or it's not funny. You know, you can't lie with humor. So, but that's me going off on another tangent. No, 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 but, it's true. It's true. The whole thing I'm doing blogs is to, to show people that I'm a real person. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. I'm Australian. I have an Aussie accent. Yes, I've got a little boy. I'm a yep. dad. I'm a wife. I live here. You know, there's crocodiles around, which there's not. But hey, you know, people think it's crocodiles in Australia. There is up in up in the north. Um, I'm just trying to be real to say, hey, I'm actually a human yeah. being. I'm a person. Um, I'm not perfect. Here's my flaws. I'm fat at the moment. I'm doing a fat to fit journey. And once I get fit, I'll help people go from fat to fit. And that's one of the things. I'm into, I'm into help. You're into help. I'm just trying to tell people, hey, this is who I am being vulnerable, having the courage to open up and showing people your life is very courageous. A lot of people actually yes. would not post things and everything's built. This goes back to the Japanese free mask is what I was trying to say. Yeah. I, I'm not interested in number one. Like I've sold luxury cars, I've driven luxury cars, I've been on luxury holidays. I can post the Instagram lifestyle, but that's that's not who I am. That's just that's just a lifestyle. Number two, friends and family know who I really am. But number three, hey, this is who I really am deep inside. And I want to be vulnerable and talk about it on camera and just do raw, uncut, edited vlogs daily, daily to say, hey, I'm just, I'm just a person. Love me, hate me, like it or hate it. Give me, you know, just be real and raw. And I think, yeah, you know, the title says, escape the nine to five, live anywhere and join the new rich. I think the new rich is being vulnerable. And I know Brene Brown goes on about it. And this is not a Brene Brown podcast, but I think lately I'm having a lot of serendipity moments where, the more you're real to people, the more people are real to you. What do you think about yeah. that? Yeah, I agree hundred percent. I just uh, wanted to finish up what I initially was talking about with Tim Ferriss. Um, what I wrote on his podcast about embarrassing himself, right? Cause he would go, he would do social experiments. One of them he did was he would go into like a Starbucks or a coffee shop and he would just lay down on the ground for like, 15 seconds while like all the people in the coffee shop are looking at him like what is this what, why is this guy laying on the floor this is crazy like were they something that's completely out of the social norm and then stand up and walk away or wear like a pink cowboy hat like all day and walk around um at the time he was living in san francisco i believe yeah. tim ferris lives in texas now yeah, but at the time he lived in san francisco and just walk around I guess in San Francisco, that's not that abnormal, a pink cowboy hat, but you, you, you guys get, I get the point. I get you know, the point. Yeah, yeah. He would walk, he would purposely embarrass himself so that he would get used to it. You know, well, ask, that ask goes the, back ask, to the go, going to Starbucks and asking for a discount. That was one of his things, I think. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, me working in, in sales, something I learned back in 2014 when I first went through timeshare sales, is there was a trainer that was there and he says, always ask for a discount. And some people were like, that, but I don't like it. And I don't want to be like cheap. And he's like, cheap, you know how much money I save every year just because I always ask for a discount. And it's amazing because I always ask for a discount. And more often than not, I get a discount. <laughs> yeah. well, you just have to ask for it. It's about yeah. getting comfortable in the uncomfortable. And it's about doing the things that you don't always want to do because, you know, the four hour work week, achieving this type of lifestyle, it is possible, it is achievable, but it's not going to always be easy. It's not always going to be smooth road. Sometimes there's bumps in the road, yeah. but you have to have that ability to persevere through those adverse moments. Yeah. And when we're talking about business, there's an element of rejection, period. There's an element of, I'm going to ask someone for something and they're going to either say yes or no. I'm going to give them my proposition of value of whatever yeah. my business is. And some people like it. Some people don't. 
me and you can spend hours and weeks working on a video and then somebody gives us a thumbs down be in two seconds yeah. just for whatever reason yeah. you know what i mean but that's okay it's not for them i'm doing it for the people that it is for and sometimes that mindset can help you persevere through the adversity it's like okay it's a percentage and that's yeah. something else that tim ferris mentions i'm not sure about in this book but i know it's in the tools of titans which is about rejection like how to deal with rejection yeah. and one way to do it is to not get emotional with it treat rejection as math period so whatever it is some people's conversion is one out of ten some people's it's five out of a hundred some people's conversion is like maybe two out of, out of five. Um, I'm kind of curious with luxury cars, what was the conversion um, over there for you guys? Like, oh, with, with inquiries, probably one in three or one in four, so it's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, it's not too bad, but that's generally just across the board, I mean. Um, one of the things that, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about was one of the things you said in the book was letting bad things happen. And that is some of the- Letting bad things, things happen? Letting bad things happen. Yeah. And, and, and like oh, it's huge it's just it's mind-boggling that when you actually do it though so if you've got like so much on your plate and you're just letting bad things happen and that's and that's okay and i think we live in a world of perfectionism where everything has to be perfect and i'm i'm guilty of it myself i'm a, I'm a huge perfectionist but yeah letting bad things happen let things take their course is uh is another one and one thing i read the book a couple of years ago which i really implemented straight away was email so the origins of email is mail now you need to treat email as mail, not a chat service. So especially in my industry and, and, and industries I've worked in, people send emails and they want a response in two seconds, but email is mail. So I treat my email like mail. I check it twice a day, one in the morning, one at night, and batching. Batching is huge. So he talks about batching, turning notifications off, really unplugging from this, this internet of things everywhere, technology, communication, and you know, Tim's into um, Zen and, and all the things of quietness. And once you unplug from the world of the internet of things, you realize how many of those things are small little distractions that don't matter too much. Um, yes, yeah, so I treat my email as, uh, as mail. I go into the mailbox twice a day. Have it, have it yourself. Yeah, that's, that's the way that it should be treated, you know. Correct. Um, I think with, with all social media platforms, you know, you need to carve out that time for it. And I think you also have to go into it with the right mindset. Otherwise it can really F people up. It really can. I think social media is one of the best and one of the worst things that's ever happened to humanity. And I think people need to realize that social media, and this is another Tim Ferriss quote. This is basic for the most part, a Tim Ferriss, it's a Tim Ferriss Summary podcast, back and forth. Hey, Tim, yeah. if you're listening to this podcast and you want to be on the show, just email my assistant, uh, which is me, at info at facebook.com, and I'll, uh, I'll see if I can make some room for you, Tim. So, Tim, if you're listening out there, me and Matt would love to have you on, the, uh, on their YouTube yes. channels and shows. So yeah, we will, yeah, we'll fit it in the schedule. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Um, but social media is a full contact sport. That's something that I heard on his podcast. And I really believe that to be true, you know, and when you go into it, that mindset of you, of it being a full combat sport and you're going in there with the right intention, you're going to get the most value out of it. You know, whether you're producing content or you're consuming content, but you know, if you're just going on social media to scroll, I mean, you know, you do you, you know, to reach their own. But, you know, I've been guilty of days where I just laid around and scrolled it and I felt terrible. You know, I felt like really exhausted. I felt like I had a headache. So I really don't believe that that is a good thing to do, you know, just from my own experience. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, but uh, yeah, batching, you know, yeah. check it once or twice a day, have a purpose to check it. And besides that, be in the moment. You know, there's a type of meditation called noting, which is basically just being present, being in the moment. So if you're playing, you know, around with your kids, playing soccer with your kids, play soccer with your kids. Don't yeah. think about your work or think yeah. about what happened last year. You know, if you're at work, be at work, you know, don't yeah. think about, you know, hanging out with your buddies later on or, yeah. or either family. So just be present in, in everything that, you, that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. One of the other things in the book he talks about is adult onset ADD, adventure deficit disorder. So um, super interesting. So it's how many people work until death? I'll just work until I have X dollars and then I'll do what I want. 
If you don't define what I want, alternative activities, the X figure will increase indefinitely to avoid the fear-inducing uncertainty of this void. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the first quote of the book that I actually read. So yeah, adult onset ADD, Adventure Deficit Disorder. People do not travel. And I know with COVID it's um, very hard, but why wait until you're 60 to travel on a cruise ship with other old people who are miserable, sick, overweight, and smell? They probably don't smell. So the people out there with 60s, that's just a generalization. But people like us, I'm in my, um, nothing to say my age, but uh, I could be in my 20s or 30s. But um, what do you think about that? Adult onset ADD, adventure yeah. deficit disorder. Well, that inspired me to also mention like uh, a regret with old people, you know? Um, so let's talk about both of those. So ADD, I've been diagnosed with ADD my whole life. And, you know, I think that it, 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 to an extent it is real because I feel like we're, our education system, Australia may be different, but I'm sure you could vouch for me. I feel like we're, we're taught compliance and we're taught to relent. That's something that was mentioned in Tim Gro Grover's book, uh, Relentless, which is another great book. Yeah. But the people are caught, taught compliance and they're, and they're about just to sit, do what they're told. And I don't think that that's most people's inner gear. Most people, like, they want adventure. They want to get out there. They want to explore new ideas because that's exciting, right? Doing the same thing all the time is boring. So, yeah, if you make someone sit down in, the, you know, in a class or if they have a job and if they sit down and they're not interested in it, they're going to be craving adventure. They're going to be craving, craving variety, you know? So no wonder why they can't pay attention because they're bored of it, you know? Mm. And I get there is a time where you got to sit down and you got to grind it out and sometimes do, do that. But um, yeah, I love the way that that's phrased. But when I worked in, in timeshare sales for five years, I would talk to people from 20 years old to 80 years old and they're all on vacation. So you can talk to some of these older people. And one of the biggest things that you would see is, is regret in a lot of them, you know, and at the end of the day, do you want to be the person that says, I wish, or I'm glad mm. because the choices you make now is going to determine what person you are in the future. Yeah. And do, the person in the future that says, I wish says, I wish that I did this with my family. I wish I went on that cruise ship. Yeah. I wish I went on that vacation. And then the other type of person at the end of their life is the, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad that I went on vacation with my family all those times. I'm glad that I figured out how to live a four hour work week lifestyle yeah. because I get all of these emotional benefits and all these spiritual benefits. I'm glad rather than saying, I wish there's yeah. a lot of people that say, Oh man, I wish I started that business or I wish I did this. I wish I did that. And that's terrible. You know, pain is a motivator. A lot of people they're, they have the pain of taking action now, like making that cold call or going and asking this person thing. But honestly, what's more painful that or later on regretting that you never did it, you know? So I think sometimes looking at that and bringing it into your present, I think it can help you make decisions. I, I know Tim Ferriss in four hour work week also mentioned, uh, you might remember, remember the, the, the fat BMW driver. Yeah, I've got the page. Yeah, so the, um, yeah. <laughs> talks about the fat, I think that motivated him. The, the fat man in the red BMW convertible. Yeah, because because for him that was a visual of someone that was older than him at the time, and he's like, I don't want to be like that. Mm. You know, that does not look fun for me because that guy looks unhealthy. He looks unfulfilled. He looks unhappy. And Tim Ferriss at that time was like, you know what? I don't want to be um, unhealthy. I don't want to be unfulfilled. I don't want to be, you know, a slave to a, a, a job that I'm, uh, that I'm just working at to buy a car to impress people that don't, that I don't even like. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It said, it said in the book that it scared the hell out of him and it actually was an acute phobia where he had to do some research on people to, and that's where he came up with the idea of lifestyle design and didn't realize it was such a thing. So uh, Vagabonding was uh, another book that I've done that Tim Ferriss quotes that really changed his life as well which was traveling the world on, the, on a shoestring budget. Now, one of the things I did in my personal life uh, back in 2011, uh, my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife, uh, we've been together for nearly, I think, 11 years. She said to me, out of the blue, uh, I want to travel the world and uh, you're either coming with me or you're not. And we basically made a decision that we sold up everything. We both quit our jobs. We sold up everything, moved everything into a small storage unit and uh, we bought a one-way ticket to the UK and uh, I've got family up in Norwich in the UK 
and uh, we got a two-year visa and we traveled for three weeks in in Europe and did that and then got back into a dingy hotel with about 100 kilos of our possessions with a two-year stay with no job money in the bank of course just a little bit and had no future prospects so we were basically in a hotel for two weeks we ended up getting a house we ended up both getting jobs we both traveled all of europe for one year and then it was too cold and i had to come back to australia because uh, i was missing the heat <laughs> and uh, we literally were over there for one year and came back and uh, yeah then started the family you know started our life but we did that we traveled and then we continued to travel to other countries and you know, we recently went to San Francisco, uh, Mexico as well. Uh, so we've traveled a lot of places, but obviously more travel in the future. But I've, I've lived the four-hour work week in terms of traveling uh, in my, you know, eight years ago, seven years ago for a full year traveling. And they used to call me deck chair. So when I worked in the UK, I was selling cars and the guys at work used to call me deck chair. And so I would call me deck chair because they said you're on holidays. Every weekend I would go to Barcelona, Spain, Paris, and we'd just catch the train or catch a plane on Friday and come back to work Monday. So we traveled, we, 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 we did it without knowing. And um, yeah, it's just like someone can tell you what, how, a, um, how an apple tastes, but you, you can't read how an apple tastes. You have to, you have to taste it. Like, and that's what yeah. traveling does. And the, and the onset ADD, a, a adventure deficit disorder is huge. It's huge, it's absolutely huge. And a lot of people that might get to 60s, 70s and retire, like the retirement age in Australia is 67. You might get to 67 and you're not healthy enough to travel. So travel when yeah. you're healthy, when you can move, when you fit and meet people, dance, sing, drink, have fun, live life. So yeah, it's massive. I'm, I'm super passionate about travel and looking forward to next year when everything sort of opens up again and traveling yeah. within Australia. Yeah. And with, and with travel, you really don't need to be a millionaire to no, vacation like no. a millionaire, you know, um, especially nowadays with, with, you know, Airbnbs, the accessibility, you know, um, it's incredible. Go camping, it's free. I can't just go camping. Yeah. <laughs> it's free, honestly. It's like going for a walk. It's free. I don't know. If I go camping in Australia, I feel like I'm gonna get eaten. I'll no, lie. it's not like that. So so those <laughs> those who are playing at home who not don't live in Australia. ninety uh, percent of Australians live uh hundred Ks within the the on the shore, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. So which is mostly densely populated and uh, doesn't have a lot of native like it's not it's not the jungle, if that makes sense. So yeah. most Australians live in in suburbia, so to speak, um, very similar to America in suburbia. But yeah, when you go out in the outback and you know some of the rough terrain, yeah, it's it's going to be a bit hairy, but similar to America and other places yeah. in the world. We got in Florida, we have alligators. Yeah, I know. I see, I see it on the TV. It's amazing. The golf courses. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A, like a dinosaur walking yeah. on a golf course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's crazy. I wonder what Tim's doing now. I mean, he's made all his money. He's done all his books and things like that. But uh, I'm not sure what he's next thing he's um he's working on but he's yeah. got a great he's got a great podcast yeah he definitely doesn't have the the desire or the need um and he doesn't have the want to put out like a gary v level of content no yeah so gary you know what i mean yeah 100 like like tim ferris will do like a podcast every 10 days or something he does his email once a week I don't know if he's writing another book, you know, so he's definitely chilling, you know, he's yeah. definitely like enjoying his life. He's, he's living life on his time, you know, yeah, and, absolutely. and that is a very admirable. Um, I, I'm, I'm on a different level. I have a different lifestyle. I have kids and everything. So I yeah. feel like I, I need to put out more content. I need to be putting myself out there more than he does, but uh, I mean, he's earned it. You know what I mean? So um, well, he's, he's the real rich, which uh, he talks about in the book. He quotes Henry David Thoreau. A man is rich in the proportion to the number of things he can afford to let alone. So rich is actually saying no, not not yes. Yeah. So that's how rich Tim is and other people that live the, the new rich, which is lifestyle design, which is time and mobility. It's the, it's the freedom to say no to things. Look, I'm going to be unavailable for a week. Shoot me an email. Uh, I'll get back to it in a week. Um, yeah, being what he talks about in the book was the whole idea was the whole four-hour work week design was this. It was it was pre-upwork and fire. It was designing an automated system where you can sell a product and service and make enough money where you had the choice to do what you want, when you wanted, with whom you wanted. That was the premise of the book. And Tim did that with software, with products and services, obviously books as well. So he's made his money on automated systems. Okay. Then it's grown from there, which you had a whole bunch of people doing the laptop lifestyle, live anywhere, entrepreneur lifestyle. 
it doesn't work. I don't know about you, but I don't stop working. And that's why I'm vlogging as well to show people, hey, you, you can enjoy your family. You can enjoy food. You can enjoy fitness. You can enjoy life while working on your passions as well. So it's not, it's not the end all, end all be all. And I think Tim has really perfected this like a fine art. What do you think? Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. You know, a master. And yeah. obviously not perfect, you know, but I don't think perfection is possible. You know, I think everybody can, you know, improve. And I think that the techniques in uh, the four hour work week um, have worked for others. So why can't they work for you? You know? Yeah. And I think a lot of people might be, you know, in a nine to five job, you know, 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week. Maybe they have kids like me and you and they're, they might be looking at something like this for our work week and like, all right, that's great for someone like Tim Ferriss who doesn't have any kids and, you know, just could basically be ultimately resourceful with just himself. But I yeah. got bills to pay. I got kids and, you know, yeah. I, I wake up super early. I got my job and, and that's it. I'm barely making ends meet. You know, yeah. I want to like address the mindset of that because there might be some people that watch these videos that are living that and they might say, okay, that's great for those people, but that can't be me. But yeah. I think that's a limitation that people put on themselves. That's a delusion, not, not, not a delusion in the sense that they're, those people are delusional, but it, it, it's basically a, a, a lie. You know, I think that through batching, people can find a way to, to create something that they really want. Mm -hmm. You know, like Gary Vee talks about that, where it's just like, all right, if you work like nine to five, what are you doing from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m., you know? Yeah. So what are you doing when you're not at work, you know? Yeah. And from that 6 p.m. to 1 a.m., all right, maybe you're with the family, but when the kids go to bed, what are you doing from like 9 p.m. to 1 a.m.? You know, there's, it's almost like looking at a life as like no excuses. Like if you want it bad enough, find a, a certain slot in your day where you can work on your craft. And if you don't know what you want to do outside of your regular day-to-day -day job, that could be your time to learn, to learn these things and being open to different um, mindsets and different possibilities and exploring those options with action, not just with intellectual thought, putting yourself out there, you know, and a lot of people <clears throat> might not know what their, their passion is. And I did a video on my channel years ago about, you know, what do you do if you have no passion? or if you have too many passions, yeah. because like, you know, I've had, I've been guilty of both moments. Sometimes in my life, I'm like, wow, I'm interested in like 25 different things. And sometimes I'm like, I'm interested in nothing. So it's like, what, what do you do? Do you do something? You know, action is better than no action. You know, yeah. motion creates emotion. So if you have like a spark of an idea of like, all right, I'm kind of into philosophy right now. Okay, we'll read about whatever philosophy you're interested, make a blog about it, make a video about it, create something out of it. All right, then the next week you're into, interested in, you know what, I just feel like, like gaming. All right, we'll create content around it. Start doing something in that time to kind of get the wheels moving, you know, and then you kind of figure it out as you, as you go, so yeah. to speak. You yeah. know, so it's almost like don't make, you know, excuses. Yeah, you, you might have the, you know, the, the stack deck uh, or the, the, the cards you know, might not be in your favor at the moment, but there's plenty of stories out there where people took, you know, but being in the worst situation and making the best out of it, you mm -hmm. know, and a lot of it's like a mindset choice. And when you do figure out what you want to want to do, I think it's good to have the mindset of I'm going to be the best or I'm going to be average. That's it. You know, there's no really, there's nothing really else. You know, you're either going to be the best or you're going to be the average. And when you have the mindset of, I want to be the best, you know, you're going to go that extra the length. You're going to go that extra mile. And being the best can also, that, that mindset can also work with, with uh, mastery. You know, I'm not just going to dabble with the information. I'm going to master the information. Um, so with the four hour work week, if you really value the freedom, the autonomy, um, then master it, you know, live it experiment with it you know put put things into action to see how it'll work you know don't yeah. just only intellectualize it and and realize that it's not going to be perfect you know it's like you're figuring things out as you go along you know no matter what job somebody might have i'm sure when they first started they were terrible and then when they figured it out they got better mm -hmm. you know same well, with like ride yeah. riding a bike 
I, you, when you teach your kids to ride a bike, do you think you could teach them by giving them a book and then saying, all right, now you know how to ride a bike? No. They get on it. They start pedaling. That's how they learn. You know, we learn through the actual motions and the action. So. Yeah. No, I, 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 I agree completely. And look, one of the things that we've got to drop those outdated comparisons that, that more is better and that, that money equals success and, and their outdated modes of thinking. Um, for example, I just released my book, Success in 50 Steps, and I explain in the book and the titles, like people think, oh, I must be successful. No, no, no. My idea was to, to write a book that is a success in itself. You know, I bought the world's largest free book summary website and video written audio format. That's a success in itself. We all have our own modes of what success is. And the disease that we have to do everything is what Tim's referring to is the man is rich only to the things that he can actually say no to. So you need to get clear with yourself and say, hey, I don't need to do a million things. The four-hour work week is how can I just, how can I quiet my life? How can I be zen to myself? But, but do me. But, but do you, like the Elvis song, you know, the, I live the life, I, you know, I live it my way. Um, live you, like Tim's all about, just live your life your own way. You, you're not a replica, everyone's an original. Be your original, play that one string you have, which, which is your life. And, you know, who cares what people say about people's lifestyles? And that's the whole thing with even the online entrepreneur world. People get confused and they think, oh, he must be successful because you've got a certain amount of YouTube subs or you're big on Spotify or you've got a great website and traffic and you've done this, you've done that. Money and success is an outdated model. If you inherited $5 million and you didn't tell anyone you inherited $5 million, you could buy that big house and that big car and those fancy clothes and those fancy holidays and have an amazing Facebook and Instagram page. But would people really call you successful who really knew you? No, they would say you're, you're, you're a fake, you're a phony. Money and success don't, it's, it's an outdated model. But also, more is better is an absolute outdated model. Tim's talking about less is better. And living versus success and money. Like tasting life, experiencing life. I think that's what Tim's referring with the book, with not just being on vacation, but actually experiencing the moment of life. A little bit like Eckhart told me in The Power of Now. Experiencing the now and quietening off the noise and the distraction. That's what I got from the book. That was... That was huge. It's how to create automated systems or just to sort of, you know, travel a bit, live life, you know, experience, meet people, dance, drink, socialize, have fun, experience different cultures. I mean, that that's, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about success. It wasn't about the laptop lifestyle. And I think a lot of people have, have labeled this book of, oh, you know, it's bullshit. It's a phony. It's fake. No, 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 no. It's, you can balance your life. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about that? Yeah. Um, I think one takeaway from the book is also like a simple like sentence to help, you know, s like sum up a lot of it. And there's a lot of s one sentences because it is a very dynamic book as well. Mm. But um, one one sentence that can help me sum it up is like the ultimate resource is resourcefulness. Because mm. there's a, a, a lot of that in, is implemented in the book, you know, because you can have all the resources in the world, but if you're not resourceful, you'll waste those resources, you know? So a lot of it is about, you know, efficiencies, um, optimization um, with, with businesses. But what I also like, since you were mentioning um, everything you were just mentioning is, you know, money does not equal happiness, you know, but if you're unhappy or rather have the money than be unhappy without the money, you know, I do agree with that as well, but <laughs> there's, there's an art to being fulfilled. You know, that's something yeah. that I, I um, Tony Robbins has talked about on the sem sem um, seminars that I've been to. It's like the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. It's the yeah. two skills to master in life. You yeah, know? Absolutely. And it's different for everybody. That's why it's called an art of fulfillment, where achievement is a science. You know, you do X, Y, and Z, you'll achieve A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and the science of achievement can also be through modeling. You know, one person did it like this. So if I just model the way that they did it, then I can achieve it too. Yeah. So there's more of a science to it, but fulfillment is different. You can't model someone else's fulfillment. You know, somebody might want, always want to go travel, you know, to cold places. Like, let's say they want to go to Antarctica. That's my dream. I'll feel fulfilled. But then my wife who hates the cold, 
she's not going to be fulfilled going to Antarctica. She's going to be like, this is terrible. I want to go somewhere else. (laughs) So the art of fulfillment is different for everybody. For some people, it's spending more time with their family. Some, for some people, it's a um, cleaning up a neighborhood for some people. It's a helping others rehabilitate from uh, maybe substance abuse or physical abuse. For some people, it might be giving back as far as, you know, being able to provide meals for people. For some people, it's giving back as to, um, sharing you know their own story and their own adventure and their own their own lessons so you know i think that when we start living for we instead of me then we're going to be you know dabbling more with the fulfillment aspect because i definitely on a personal note feel more fulfilled when i'm providing and helping for others you know nothing else gets me gushy emotions you know or teary teary eyed or super happy and like is when i do things for my family and do things for my kids Mm. you know because when i do things for myself great you know, I, I, I feel happy on one level, but when I do something great for those that I really care about and love, I feel great on a, on a, a completely different level. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. That's great. I want to sort of wrap up the book as well on some of the themes um, for those listening. So yes. just and thank you for being the anchor for making sure we keep going back to the book. No, that's okay. No, no, no. I, that, the whole idea of this is to is to have a riff and also go back to the, some of the things with the four-hour work week. So really quickly to sum it up, for those who are just getting started, number one, start small, think big. Number two, identify what excites you versus what bores you. Three is eliminate and focus on what excites you. And four, stick to what excites you no matter what people say. It's your life. Live it the way you know it is right for you. So that was something in the book by Jay uh, Writer. And yeah, it's huge. So do what, do what excites you guys. So like, you know, whatever sets you on fire. Um, everyone's got a, a flame and a fire inside. You know, throw firewood on it. You know, get around people who's going to spark your fire and keep it lit. Um, you only have one life. So yeah, that's, that's what I got from the book as well. Like, just do you, whatever, whatever you is. Um, you know, your friends and family, they're going to do it their way. And, and let them do it their way. Just just do what you need to do, whatever you want to do. And die to your past. Like, your past is dead. It's a, it's a dead phenomenon. Um, your future is not even existent yet. So you can, you know, you can mould it and shape it and model it. Model your lifestyle. That That is the, the whole premise of the book, which is lifestyle design. Design your lifestyle, whether it be next year, three years, five years down the track. If you've got to put your head down for 10 years and work your tail off to say, hey, you might be 30 now, but you'll be you'll be 40, you'll be 40 in 10 years. People, and Tony Robbins says, people underestimate, people overestimate what they can do in one year, but they underestimate what you can do in 10 years. So if you think about if you reverse engineer your future lifestyle, let's say you go, I want to retire when I'm 40, I want to live the four hour work week in 10 years. Systematically, like an engineer and a scientist, reverse engineer the steps that you need and the lifestyle that you want to live. Your lifestyle might be Fifty thousand a year, hundred thousand dollars a year, ten thousand dollars a month, eight thousand dollars a month, twenty five thousand dollars a month. I'm sure you can do something for it. You invest. You can create products. You can you can live the four hour work week. So um, you don't have to live it tomorrow, but you know you, you can live it. Um, you know I I'm not living the four hour work week, but in a sense I'm I'm living my passion. I'm doing what it excites. I wouldn't be doing. I'm not doing this. We're not doing this for money. We're doing this because we like books. We're, we're talking about information. We like helping people. We educate people. Um, you know, you've been, how long have you had your YouTube channel for, for that? Um, I started it in 2016. Yeah, I started mine in 2017. Do you have a podcast as well or are you just doing YouTube? No, just um, doing YouTube. Um, yeah. I feel like I have been cashing in maybe a little bit too early. Some of the Tim Ferriss's perspective of wealth, which is yeah. like time and like away from that, you know, because yeah. I've had, you know, uh, over the past f- five years, taken like two weeks off, three weeks off, uh, a month and a half off, and just did whatever the heck I wanted, you it's know. Fine. And I think that that's that's great and maybe bad at the same time, you know. You don't, it's, owe, you don't owe anyone anything. So the thing with YouTube is people yeah. think that you own something, and it's like I do my YouTube channel for me, my son, yeah. my family. Uh, and friends I, I don't do it for the general public but it, the secondary thing is pe- people actually it, that is the thing when you create something you're creating it yes you're putting it out there and these are platforms where people can tune in or they can plug into spotify youtube website and they get value too which is great which is great but you're doing this for you first and foremost yeah. so you don't owe anyone anything to 
um, your schedule, what you want to podcast. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry to cut you off, but yeah, I'm passionate about. You, and, I, and I have considered um, to just get a larger quantity of content out there, um, outsourcing. You know, I haven't outsourced anything besides um, a couple like anime, uh, like uh, cartoon pictures of myself because yeah. my old uh, yeah. um, channel icon was an like, yeah. animated version of me. So, but all of the video production I haven't outsourced, and that's really what takes up most of the time that's limited to be like a, a video a week or a video every two weeks. Um, another thing would be to make more videos like what we're doing right now, where it's just face to camera, because those are a lot easier to pump out yeah. and to produce. Um, Cause I feel like that that's one thing that I could do with, with the channel specifically to help increase more, more um, quantity of content without uh, adding as much time in my personal life. Cause you know, I don't, we, we all have 24 hours in, in a day, but when you have a regular career and a wife and two kids, you don't have as much time in the day to allocate as someone like Tim Ferriss back in the day, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Um, I think that no matter what your um, situation is, you can get value from the four hour work week, but you also have to be realistic into what you can do personally, you know, because I want to also address to the people that do work 60 hours a week, do have a family and everything like that. And it's like, all right, how do I go from that to living the four hour work week? It but it's not going to happen yeah. overnight. Correct. Correct. It's Correct. not going to happen overnight. Like, like you said, you're not living the four hour work week lifestyle and I'm not either, but I believe we're both on the path to do that. And if yeah, you're on the correct. path to do it, you're going to reach it at some point. It might be five years or 10 years, but as long as you, you stay on the path and then you'll eventually get there as yeah, opposed and the, to and someone. The, and the goal is not the four hour work week. The, the goal is the mindset of the four hour work week. It's a mindset. Yes. It's, yes. it's, it's, it's a way of life. It's not yet. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. To cut you off. Yeah. It's not actually literally four hours. Four hours a week. <laughs> yeah. I worked, I worked three point, I worked three and a half hours this week. Wow. I'm living That's the four hour work week. Yeah. No, it's a mindset. So I work, you know, I, I, I work my tail off and, yeah. and I feel like I'm living <clears throat> the four hour work week because it's on my time because I'm doing what I want currently at the moment when I want with, with who I want. So I'm living those principles and um, yeah, I, I, I do think. It's like, what is Tim Ferriss doing right now? Tim Ferriss is now living the one hour work week. No, no, no. Tim's, Tim's, Tim's. I know I'm messing. Yeah. Tim's, Tim's sleeping eight hours a day, but he's, he's, (laughs) he's, he's he's living 16 hours and he's producing great content and great things and great books and he's doing great things. So look, we owe a lot to the authors and um, yeah, I've got massive respect for him. Um, Yeah. Timothy Ferris, everybody, the four hour work week, escape the nine to five, live anywhere and join the new route. So I want to thank Matt for coming on the show. We're gonna we're gonna call it a wrap really soon. This won't be the last time you will see Matt. Uh, we will do more book summaries in the future and just chat. I will be chatting with different um, YouTubers and things like that as well, just to um, show my audience, especially um, I've got a massive audience on um, podcasts and Spotify who maybe don't watch YouTube and a and a and a as, as, and a small audience on YouTube myself. Um, so Matt, just tell everyone again where they can find you if they want to um, digest some of your content. Um, if you want to find any of my content, just at Mattless McGill on YouTube and Instagram mostly. I have a Twitter and some other things, but I like not really ever go on it. Um, on a daily basis, I'm active on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, and the last thing I want to just wrap up with is like, I really like to help those people that I feel like need the value the most that need the content, you know, the most. And, um, it's like, I, I would, I have feel for those people that like want to get to this lifestyle, but they're trapped. They're almost like trapped in that, uh, paycheck to paycheck, or they're trapped in that like comfortability of, of their job. And, you know, like, how do I go from point A to point B, you know, point A is, you know, working, you know, 10 hours a, a day, you know, having a family and, and, and all this, and then getting to something like this. Um, and it's like, how do they deal with the adversity? You know, you're mentioning excitement, you know, doing what excites you the most, yeah. you know, and, and that's kind of the premise of the book, but people could be excited about something, but then once they start taking action, they start to get, you know, some failures, they start to get some rejection and that can definitely take away from the excitement. But it's almost like having the goal in mind, you know, having the end goal and not letting those things interrupt you, you know, to get to that thing that excites you. You know, I think, and one way to do that is um, to apply 
a relentless psychology. You know, I, I recently just reread Relentless by Tim Gro uh, uh, Grover. I can and tell. Yeah, I can tell. If you, if you want to do that video next, we're talking about that. I'm, I'm open yeah, to that I've, as well. I've done, I've done a summary uh, a couple of years back. It's uh, Michael Jordan's uh, personal um, training. Yeah. And the documentary is on Netflix as well. It's, um, yeah, you want to talk about um, someone who's focused. Yeah, Tim Grover. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, that, that book, you know, there's a lot of books that they, they complement each other. You know, they work well together. And I feel like that book mixed with this book can complements each other really well. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like you could be excited about the lifestyle that you want to create. But if you have the relentless psychology to get it, you're going to be able to get through all the adversity, the difficulties, the failures, the setbacks, etc. You know, because if you don't have that, you just have the four hour work week, you know, book in your mind, but you don't have the relentless pursuit to achieve it. You probably won't get there. You know, and I, and I feel like they kind of, um, it's important to do that. Um, but yeah, so it's like, it's easy to tell people how to get through things when they're feeling good. I like to try to find ways to get, give people value when it's not easy, when it's hard, you know, because I think that's how life is. Yeah. <laughs> Tim worked, Tim worked his ass off for a decade and got successful before he started speaking about it. So yeah, don't misconcept, don't, don't misconstrue the book's title that yeah, you have to work four hours. You have to work your ass off to then design a lifestyle. But um, yeah, look, don't burn out, guys. Uh, do what excites you. I want to thank Matt for coming on. Uh, it won't be the last time you'll see him. So I think we're going to wrap it there, guys. So everyone playing at home on podcast and YouTube as well. This has been the four hour work week book chat, similar to a book date, but I'm not going to give it a title. I will do another book summary so you guys can go through it. And uh, we'll have Matt back on the channel and show to talk about another book in the future. So yeah, uh, check him out. There'll be a link uh, below there. He's got some great stuff. Um, if you need a health coach or a kick up the butt, Matt is your guy. David Goggins workout. What is it again? The four miles. What is, what's the, the challenge the again? The four, 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 48 challenge. So what is four it miles every four hours for 48 hours. So you ran how many miles in 48 hours? I ended up doing uh, 53 miles in 48 hours and you on film that on your youtube channel as well so that's on your youtube yep. channel yeah and i have all the fitbit um miles documented as well um, right, so i'm going to link that in the show notes as well where you can watch matt as a crazy man what, what about your sleep when did you sleep <laughs> my sleep is something that on has the, been on the pretty no, on the challenge on the challenge oh on the the, challenge. the four for 48 challenge yeah, yeah, yeah. um this the sleep was one was uh two naps pretty much, you know, just cause it was two days, but I, you do it in slots. So it's like four hours and it could be like 12 AM to 4 AM. The next slot would be 4 AM to 8 AM. So the way I would get the sleep in, which would be, I would do a 12 AM run. And then I would go to sleep at like one in, in the morning or, you know, two in the morning. And then I would wake up at seven or six thirty seven, and then do the the run for and that you, slot and you've documented that in the video as well yeah 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 right, so the way so that I'm you can gonna, arrange i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna, gonna spoil it go check his channel out watch his stuff he's the man the real thing doesn't just do book summaries personal development stoicism as well um yeah we'll have him back on but um yeah guys this is uh you can call it episode one book chat the four hour work week we'll be back more with some more tim ferris and if you want us to talk about a book comment below so Thanks again, Matt, for coming on, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Take care. Have a great day. Michael, thank you. No worries, mate. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. And that's all right. No, we'll stay on. Uh, good stuff, man. <laughs> that, that, was, that was good.